Hi everybody, um, welcome to our presentation on young carriers. Uh, we'll start by introducing ourselves and then we'll go on to have a bit of discussion about our experience as young carriers. Um, so my name's Olivia, I am a trustee of Alex TLC um, and a young carrier. I joined around February time. Uh, my dad was a chair of the Alex TLC board. So I've grown up kind of um, being around Alex TLC and the trustees and everything like that. And I've always wanted to be a part of it. Um, I'm personally really passionate about um, wanting to do more for young carriers and carriers in general, which is why I thought joining the trustee board might be a good direction to go in. Um, my dad and my uncle both had ALD, so I've had experience in that um, area. And obviously I've always known that I'm a young carrier myself. So um, yeah, Taylor, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, of course, thanks, Olivia. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Taylor Kane. I am from the United States, as you can probably tell by my voice. Um, I am also a young ALD carrier. I'm 22 years old and I graduated from college in December. Um, I have a similar story to Olivia. Um, I found out that I was a carrier at a young age. Uh, my dad was diagnosed with ALD in 2001 when I was three years old. And at the time of his diagnosis, uh, the doctors told my family that because ALD is an X-linked disease that I was a carrier um, and inherited the gene from my dad. Um, my dad passed away in 2003 when I was five. Um, but like ALD does to many families, um, now we know that many fam people in my family have been impacted by the, the, by the disease. Um, I have a half sister who is also, of course, a carrier, uh, many cousins who are also carriers, and um, few, actually all of my dad's siblings also had the ALD gene as well. Um, so obviously ALD is a really big impact on families, but like Olivia, I'm really passionate about carriers, especially young carriers because, you know, of course with ALD and other X-linked diseases, they're seen as boys' diseases um, because, you know, they do affect boys and men, but they also do affect women. And, you know, as we know, many ALD carriers do eventually get symptoms. And being a young carrier, I think that's hard to process, you know, knowing that, you know, right now we're pre-symptomatic, asymptomatic, like I never even really know what to call myself, um, you know, because it's so unknown what the future holds. Um, and then, of course, it comes to family planning and, you know, discussing with a partner and a relationship and, you know, trying to integrate this carrier status into your life as a young person. I think that's something that comes with a lot of challenges. So very passionate about that and excited to be speaking with you all today. Not today, this is pre-recorded, but you know what I mean. Um, so we're gonna be asking each other a couple of questions um, to, to really dive into our carrier status and talk about how that's impacted our lives. So I'm going to start with the first one for Olivia. So how did finding out you were a carrier at a young age impact you? Yes, yeah, so um, I didn't cover this, but I am similar to you in that I've always grown up knowing I was a carrier. I think, uh, my parents have always told me you know right from when I, I couldn't even remember when they told me it'd be about six years old uh, but I remember going to the doctors to a genetic counsellor twice around about when I was 10 and again when I was about 13 14 um, to discuss my um, status and obviously what effect that will have on my future family if I choose to have one uh, so personally for me I I liked knowing up that growing up knowing that I was a carrier um, because obviously it meant that I didn't have the kind of shock factor when I was older of you know suddenly finding it out and um, kind of suddenly feeling all of these emotions about it. I feel like it's been very normalised because I've always known about it. Um, and I think it's given me time to know exactly what my future holds in a certain sense. So I think like with family planning and things like that, I already have a good idea of what I need to do. Um, you know, like I would like to do IVF. Um, and I think because I've always known that, I just always know what um, routes I need to take in life in order to accommodate um the situation that I'm going to be in as a result of being a carrier um 
I think you have it quite similar, don't you, Taylor? I do. Yeah, I completely agree with everything you've said. Um, I also, and I'll, I'll speak more about the organization a little bit later, but I also wanted to mention that in 2017, I started um, Remember the Girls, which is an international organization for carriers and females impacted by X-linked conditions. Um, as I mentioned, ALD is one of like the hundred X-linked conditions that exist um, where, you know, women have the stigma surrounding being just a carrier, um, you know, their symptoms being understudied, not understood, um, having to deal with these difficult reproductive options. Um, but I would just want to also point out that Anything I say on here is just my personal opinion. Um, as we always say, like everyone's journey is their own. Um, you know, what we might want or what might be best for one person is not best for everyone. Um, so obviously just keep that in mind and anything, whether it be family planning or any part of the carrier or rare disease journey is really individual. Um, but yeah, I completely agree with you. I've known I was a carrier for literally as long as I can remember. Like, I don't even remember being told um, the first time. I also was taken to a genetic counselor when I was 12. Um, and I do remember that I saw one of my dad's former doctors there as well. And at this time, I didn't really know much about the symptomatic side of things because it was still like pretty new, like it was thought that it was really rare for carriers to get symptoms. But I do remember one of the doc, like the doctor having me walk, like testing my balance basically. And I remember I was kind of confused because, you know, I kind of had this connection in my mind. Like I'd seen carriers and seen that some were in wheelchairs or had walkers, but I just think over the years, as more information came out, it became, you know, more, you know, I started to understand more like, oh, this, could happen to me, or there's a high chance that I can get symptoms. Um, but regardless, I think growing up with the knowledge that I was a carrier, like I would have not, I would not change it for the world. I think since I knew from so young, I never had that, you know, shock and awe of being like 16 or 18 and, you know, finding this information out and then having to completely restructure what I thought for my future. I also think our circumstances are you know, unique just because since it's from our dads, we knew that we were obligate carriers. So, you know, obviously a lot of uh, parents have to go through the decision, like, when should I get my daughter tested? Um, if, you know, the mother's the carrier. So obviously we didn't have to go um, through that. And at least in the U.S., there are definitely issues when it comes to getting, you know, someone under 18 years old tested for a condition that is not thought to affect them for a long time. So there's so many things to consider, but I definitely think that knowledge is power and I would not change it for the world. Like I'm really thankful that my parents um, and mostly my mom, of course, went about it the way that she did. I think I found as well, I went to a doctor recently um, just because I wanted to kind of gain a bit of a relationship with them for when things might come up like symptoms. And I, I did feel quite dismissed by them as well because, you know, I am young and they view it as, you know, the women still aren't really affected because he did say straight away, well, it's an X-linked disease, so you're not really going to have any problems. And I was like, well, that's not true. I've read lots of studies about it. You know, I, lo I know lots of women that have it. Um, so yeah, I do think it's kind of a constant situation of getting turned down a bit, I suppose, in the medical community. But um, as well as that, I didn't actually realise I was asymptomatic or that I was going to be symptomatic potentially until a few years ago um, when I Googled it, <laughs> I think really. Mm -hmm. You know, I was looking on the Alex TLC website and everything like that. Um, so as I have known that I was a carrier for a long time, knowing that I was potentially going to be symptomatic is quite a new discovery actually. So Yeah, same, like definitely same, but I think something that does, while it is definitely stressful and obviously we're gonna be talking about symptoms a bit later, mm -hmm. I do feel hopeful in that we will have more options for treatments and things like that. But yeah, I mean, cause I feel like that's just the mindset that makes me feel the best about it. You know, that helps me not to worry as much, but yeah, I agree. Um, I always knew like when I was a kid, I, I would say like, Oh, I, I'm, I'm not going to have babies the normal way. Like I remember like saying that in elementary school. So I always knew 
you know, that I was going to do this other reproductive option since I knew that I was a carrier, but yeah, the symptoms and that knowledge came later on. Um, for me, a lot of it was just kind of going to ALD Connect conferences, which is like the main ALD organization in the US and seeing carriers clearly having symptoms and being like, there's definitely something going on here. Um, and then now, thankfully, you know, at every conference, women are talked about um, and there's research going on for women and it's great to see that progress, but it's also unfortunate because a lot of doctors and general practitioners you know, they, when they were in medical school, they were taught that X-linked diseases were boys and men diseases. So you did the perfectly right thing though, of being like, well, I've, you know, there's tons of research and hopefully that mobilized him to look more into it on his own. Cause as a medical professional, you know, they should be constantly educating themselves. So you telling him that, you know, not only improves your quality of care, but like any other women with an X-linked disease that he might see someday, like that's had an impact so yeah um I completely agree and obviously it's just something that we're going to have to keep pushing for um so would you say that being a carrier has affected any aspect of your life you know how, how does knowing that you're a carrier make you feel I think in a way it's impacted like on one side of the coin I think it's impacted everything about my life like as in I've you know, I'm so dedicated to the carrier advocacy side of things. But on the other hand, I almost feel like it has impacted none of my life. And, you know, what I mean by that is, obviously, we both, you know, went through losing our dads and experiencing grief. But I think we're still in those pre stages of, you know, like pretty much pre symptoms pre actually going through family planning options. So I think it, at this point, it almost feels like it's just kind of this thing that's just waiting for me um which obviously is is stressful and it is weird just knowing that you know in a couple years or every year pretty much you know it's just going to keep increasing so I feel like in that way I feel like it doesn't affect my life day to day like physically but then at the same time I do think a lot you know like losing my dad and also knowing that I had this disease that no one's ever heard of in my family that I also had it in my genes, like, I feel like that shapes so much of who I am. And yeah, like just being, you know, those feelings of being different and just know and understanding, which we always talk about, like you wanna be able to be, especially as a young person, especially in college, you know, there's always did feel like something that cannot make me as carefree as other people. I don't know if it was that fear of the future or knowing what's gonna happen having to grow up faster than other people just because of the adversity that we've had to face. So yeah, I mean, it's overall, it definitely has impacted my life, but I do try to stay positive about a day to day and focus on the good things. But obviously that's, you know, it's, it's a part of me, but it's not all of me, I guess is more what I'm saying. Um, What about you? Well, I think I'm the same in that um, because it's not really happening that much in my life at the moment. It's something that you would forget about. But um, I think it's also one of those that if I'm having a bad day, it makes it even worse because I think it's quite easy to think about the other bad things that are happening. And I'll go Mm -hmm. straight to that, you know, because I suppose it the aspect of things will get better. I suppose You, you know in your head a bit, well, actually, things might get worse. Um, but like you said you know we can think about uh, all the advancements that will come out um, advances in technology and you know medicine everything like that so but I think yeah I feel like it's affected me quite a lot in the sense of just having ALD surrounded my family because I think growing up I was always dealing with my dad being ill you know and my uncle died when I was uh, 12 or 13 um and I think where everybody I always felt I was looking around and all of my friends were living such a simple life and I always felt like I had so much stress and kind of a lot of stuff to think about that I always felt about five years more mature than all of my friends and um you know even now I think sometimes it, it just makes some relationships more complicated because I I feel like sometimes I come with baggage 
is the best way to put it um because i'm you know this is so complicated um so i think yeah it, i just feel like a more complicated person than the average because that's of it. exactly how i feel too exactly like and yeah i think something else it's caused me is um yeah, I started like when after my dad got sick, just having really horrible anxiety and panic attacks. And I've had that from that point on, like it's yeah. impact in my life. Like I, you know, if my mom would leave the house and she didn't pick up her phone, like I would literally start, I would get sick. Like I was super panicky because, you know, going through loss or going through seeing your parent being sick and also not having anyone your age when you're young that even I didn't even meet someone who like lost a parent until I was in fourth grade like I went through years of being the only one and it's just so weird because yeah you look around at all your classmates and everything seems perfect and you know obviously you know everyone's lives aren't perfect but then you go home and especially with a rare disease and a disease like ALD it's like when you're a kid, you can't even really explain what's going on because you can't even fully understand it. Like I didn't, wasn't able to spell adrenal dystrophy until I don't even know how long it took me to be able to spell it, honestly. But yeah, I completely agree. The growing up fast anxiety that's impacted me through my entire life. Like it's not an isolated thing. Um, but I also had, sorry, I also had the exact same situation as you. It's funny you said it. Um, I you, I honestly had like the worst panic attack because a firework went off when my mum was in, in the centre of town. And I honestly just thought she died. Like my head went straight to that. And I was ringing everyone I knew. And it's just, it's kind of ridiculous. You know, I look back at that and I'm like, what was I thinking? But at the time, it's just like I feel my head has been messed up for the last four years you know uh, you know since my dad was really ill kind of terminally ill and since he died it's just not been in the right headspace really like I think right. I'm only starting to think clearly now so it does affect you in, in being a carrier especially a young carrier it's more about your experiences I think quite often with the, your loved ones and you know seeing them suffer really we think more about that than ourselves quite often you know Definitely. like we're still recovering from all of those situations so who has the time to be thinking about everything that we're potentially going to be going through at the moment exactly and also you know you, you like see your dad and like the how the disease you know ravished him and like you know that you know your symptoms won't be nearly as severe as those so it I don't know it's almost like a weird comparison in a way like how is it it isn't fair that just because you know our dads have a y chromosome like it's just not fair that the way it happens to them and doesn't happen to us but also at the same time like it still does happen to us like we still do have this disease it's in our genetic code and I think that it's important that we obviously we know that but that we do take action on that and you know, advocate whether for ourselves, like you did at your doctor's appointment, or even like what we're doing now, just start talking about it more. Mm -hmm. I think that's super important. So speaking about talking about it in general, how do you usually talk about your carrier status if you do with your friends and your family? So with my friends, I think very, very few of them know really anything about it I kind of don't really bother speaking to them um because I think it's so complicated and me and my mum always say once you say one thing you kind of in order for them to understand you need to tell them your whole life story and that is just kind of too long to get into majority of the time so I think a few people know bits and bobs but I don't really speak to my friends that much about it and in terms of my family um I do use my mum as a support network but I do always feel that I don't want to talk to her about it too much because I know that my mum gets upset about it too because she doesn't want to be thinking about the fact that you know my life might be affected by it and that I might be ill I know it upsets her so personally I don't really want to put that on her quite often so I think it tends to be that I just go through it myself really yeah which, I, I was about to say so what is your what is your outlet then like you know obviously we can talk about it but it's not like we talk every day like 
yeah, what is, what is your outlet? Is think, it like do journal or other like type of self-care or something like that? I would say what I've recognized is that when I'm having a bad day, you know, um, I just kind of chill and watch a movie and let myself really just indulge in that bad day. And then I'll just get up and go again the next day really is the best way I can describe it. Like I say, I do talk to my mum, you know, she's great. Um, but it's just yeah you don't really want to bring it up too much I mean we were discussing this actually anyway weren't we in terms of cultural differences because I do think and you know I'm not representing every British person here obviously (laughs) but it's generally a part of the culture that we don't talk about um, our issues as much as I have seen in conferences with you know people that you know and that's really shocking <laughs> you're all so open about it because it just I've never seen anything like it here you know <laughs> totally yeah yeah in the U.S. it's definitely the complete opposite obviously I don't re- represent every American but at least being on the east coast or more in like a suburban city type of area yeah people are a lot more open to talk about things that are affecting them just in general um whether that be like mental health or you know or even like a symptom a small like symptom or medical thing that's bothering them or talking about you know what we're talking about now but at the same time I think that can I think it almost causes me to become like oversaturated in it and I think just since I do so much advocacy and since I'm really vocal about it on social media some days it feels like my entire life is consumed with it and it makes me feel like my whole life is ALD and I think it's important to just take a step back and like because I'm really worried about becoming like desensitized to it in a way like I've spoken about my dad I've written a book about him I've you know I've told the story of him so many times that I could like say it with my eyes and ears closed like I have it you know I've said it so many times but it almost gets to a point where it's like the emotion kind of gets lost and it feels like that is a different life like that wasn't me and I really I really don't want to lose that so I think while talking about it and having an outlet is important I think also having that like internal self-care I'm a big writer like journaler so even though I do talk about it with my family and friends honestly mostly my mom like if I was worried about something or if I felt like oh maybe this is a symptom I would probably talk to my mom first um but or I would probably write it I agree that my friends they all pretty much know also because I'm open about it on social media, but it's so hard for someone who is not in the ALD or rare disease world to understand. Like, I think I told you, which I laugh about this every time, but mm-hmm. some of my friends know that I'm going to eventually, if I have kids do um, IVF with PGT and typically, you know, IVF is used by women who are infertile. Um, so a bunch of my friends like thought I was infertile for that reason that I was doing IVF. And I'm like, no, but you know, it's, it's so confusing because for them, it's, they're used to this one way of thinking that IVF is for infertile women. And I'm like, no, it's also for genetic carriers. And, you know, so I, my friends do try to understand, but the things that we've gone through and will go through are so complex that it's hard sometimes. So I would never exactly. really bring it up to a friend. Um, something I'll also touch on though, is like romantic relationships. Um, yeah. And, you know, bringing up your carrier status. And that's particularly, I think, difficult as a young person, because, you know, it's it's something that obviously you think that, you know, that your partner should know, but it's like, should you bring it up on the first date? And then the person's going to assume that you think that they're going to be, you know, the father of your kids. But you say just because you want to get it out of the way, or should you wait? But then the person could be like, why didn't you tell me sooner? It's, it's like, there's no one right answer. I think since I have things like I've written articles about it before. Um, so you can pretty much find out like by looking at my like social media, maybe not find out all the details, but know that I'm a care, like I'm a genetic, you know, there's, there's some kind of clue. Um, but for me, it usually has come up in the beginning. Um, and luckily I've never had like any negative, feedback I think now you know people are more open to be you know not having kids in a traditional way 
Yeah. And, you know, I've been very like, you know, from the beginning, I've said like, oh yeah, I'll be doing IVF. To me, nothing's going to change my mind on that. Um, yeah. I, I just always had my mindset on that. I've had a cousin who's done it, who's also a carrier. Um, and that's just what I know I want to do. So I make that clear from the beginning. And I think to me, it's kind of like, you know, if you can't respect that, then, and understand that like my carrier status is something that I won't compromise on, or it's something that matters to me or, you know, that then that, like, I wouldn't want to be with that person. Um, I think the harder part is bringing up potential future symptoms and almost feeling like yeah. pretty guilty. Yeah. Um, with my, yeah, with my boyfriend now, I've like told him some about it, but yeah, it's just like, especially with ALD carrier symptoms, obviously some of them can be somewhat like embarrassing, um, you know, about like bladder or bowel dysfunction. And my boyfriend has been really understanding, like he tries to kind of make jokes, not like insensitively, but like to lighten it, lighten the mood. Um, obviously not everyone will have that good of an experience, but yeah, I think just being open and honest, but also not rushing it. Like it's really up to you. Like you don't have an obligation to tell someone the first time you meet them, you don't have an obligation to, you know, tell them at a certain time. Like it's really follow your own timeline. Obviously, like if you're going to have kids, planning to have kids, obviously at that point they need to know. Oh gosh, yeah. But... I, would... <laughs> I mean, I've actually been somewhat the, op- well, not the opposite, but I don't even think I've got to the point of telling potential partners because I'm not getting any partners <laughs> because I, <laughs> because of all of this experience, I'm just so picky with people because I don't you know if anyone comes in and they're going to show any kind of immaturity I'm straight away like no because I'm you can't handle anything that's going to come your way essentially I just I just think it's it's so much harder for me to feel like um you know I can go for anyone I want because I can't you know I need to make sure I just think I think I need to think about my future more you know and the implications of that than maybe other people do but yeah I just i I really have to take into account everything even you know my potential random breakdowns because I've remembered something sad you know yeah and they need to be able to sit there and just go and just understand why I'm upset and just kind of right you know something like that Um, so I totally agree with that yeah having it in your head all the time isn't it um but when you said like the you come with baggage like I sorry to interrupt I I relate to that on another level because yeah, I feel like you do feel like you have so many, you know, you have the, the way that your the grief of your dad still affects you and I'm you as and also me, um, you know, anxiety from everything, mm-hmm. the future carrier status, the future having to go through IVF, the future symptoms, like it does feel like we come with all this baggage. So obviously in a way, I think it's good, you know, not rushing into anything. Obviously, I'm also sure you wish sometimes you could be like, like other girls our age and be like oh you just want to meet a cute guy on a night out and see what happens but like yeah for people who have gone through things like us like it's just not that easy I know so and I feel too serious all the time I look at people and I'm like gosh am I just not fun you know in many I feel like that too (laughs) no like you know it's just like I say it's that again just feeling like you're a bit more mature than your age and everything I mean even still now so I'm 20 you know I'm at I'm at university and I still feel like that they're able to just let go a lot more than I am just because of all of this but um you know I've spoken about well I've spoken to you about that I feel like I've started getting some symptoms um you know restless legs I feel like I get so I get kind of twitchy legs especially when I'm stressed um and I feel constantly tired but I wouldn't go as far as to say chronic fatigue which is usually the symptom but um it's so hard to tell I mean I know you've said that you have some symptoms haven't you as well yeah and I'm on the same page as you like that's what's so frustrating especially about being a young carrier and thinking you know you have these morning signs because it's so hard to know what's related also to most of like the literature and studies on carriers say that late 30s 40s 50s but as we've spoken about like in a lot of conversations that I've had a lot of carriers know that they started experiencing symptoms earlier and they might be small things like I also have restless legs I cramp my legs extremely hard while I'm sleeping 
Mm -hmm. Um, I have really bad tightness in my hips. I also have like excessive fatigue. I've honestly had that for a really long time. Yeah. Um, But I did recently get um, an adrenal insufficiency is pretty rare among carriers, but I did just get an adrenal insufficiency test uh, to at least rule it out because obviously that's a big cause of chronic fatigue. Um, I did have mono like seven years ago and I think that that could be related like a long, I don't know. But yeah, I I definitely do have symptoms that I think are related to ALD, especially the restless legs and the hip tightness. Um, But it's hard because like, what's there to do about them now? Like we've said, you know, you can do yoga for stretching, but it kind of just feels like a waiting game. Like it's really creepy because some days when I notice they're worse, yeah, it feels like it's like a cloud over my head. Like it's a warning sign. Yeah. I feel like they're letting me in on what's to come. You know, it's like yeah. my leg is telling me what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, a lot of the symptoms are things that also could be five million other reasons, which is the difficult part. And because there's not much, you know, as it's only been kind of medically recognised it quite recently um that women are symptomatic uh this means that there's not that much research out there out there and i know that a lot of carriers um symptomatic carriers have discussed symptoms that they think that they have however they haven't been medically recognized as a symptom of ald so mm-hmm. you know at the moment i feel like it's all us just guessing um it totally is and what is not and I think it's almost annoying as well because say I'll get problems or like you know if I speak to my mum I think I said the smallest thing to her like oh I'm I don't know I think I said something about my eyesight maybe I was like oh I just keep feeling like I said my thumbs keep feeling really tense or something recently and I could see her panicking straight away you know thinking oh my gosh is that a symptom and I, I think yeah my mum thinks me too. being out in the cold I don't know you know but it's it's like you're constantly on high alert for you know anytime you get any illness it's like is it ALD or is it just an illness right and I think it's easy to either like hyper focus on it and be like everything is ALD or the opposite and be like which I think a lot of young carriers probably do. Like, I think we're lucky to be more aware of potential symptoms, but most studies do say that carriers get symptoms in their 30s, 40s, 50s. So I think it'd be so easy to, you know, if you have restless legs or tight hips or, you know, these other symptoms carriers can get, if you are young to be like, oh, it's it's not ALD. Like, I think it's kind of two sides of the spectrum. Um, I th- but also some days I'm like one side, some days I'm like, oh, these are probably just all like yeah. not related. At the end of the day, I think they probably are just seeing like how many carriers do have restless legs and tight hips, mm-hmm. for example. But yeah, I, I think that getting younger carriers into research is really important too, not just for us, but like, you know, if they can more follow the progression of the symptoms, you know, that's, I think that's important. Like most studies have been done, you know, on symptomatic women that are already really advanced in their symptoms. But I think just including us, and I did try to be part of like a research study, but I was mm-hmm. told that you like um, had to be like symptomatic. And I was like, well, what if I kind of am? <laughs> like, I know I don't fit into the category of women who are in their forties and fifties and who have symptoms, but I think it would benefit research to have younger carriers and watch how symptoms can progress. Like that, I'm not a scientist, but it seems like the right thing. <laughs> and I think I would encourage um, if any young carers, you know, are watching this. And I think you should see if you can get in contact with the, um, you know, I know we have a couple of doctors in the UK that are specialised. Um, I personally have an appointment booked in for November. What I want to do is just get in the books, really, so that they can track me from now at 20 years old. And then whenever I get to however old, we can compare it to me then and then now, rather than them having nothing to base my symptoms on. So I would encourage other people to see if they can do that as well. You know, um, you can co- contact uh, anyone at Alex TLC you can contact me or you can contact Karen at Alex TLC to see who you can get in contact with what doctor but yeah I would massively encourage you to do that um, and to finish off I suppose we should just say that of course if you would like to talk about any of this um, you can get in contact with either one of us you know either on Facebook or you can find our emails um, 
of course there's Alex TLC that you can speak to so Karen's the support manager you can get in contact with her or we have the health unlocked forum which you'll find um on our on Alex TLC's Facebook page um and of course you have remember the girls as well don't you and the- yeah you can yeah you can find remember the girls um, I would re- recommend just going to the website, rememberthegirls.org, and then you can find our closed Facebook group, all of our social media pages, and a bunch of other ways you can get involved. We also have some blog posts um, from other carriers in our group. And Remember the Girls is not just ALD, but I think you know the value of it is that it brings carriers of all X-linked diseases together, and you really see the magnitude of you know how the carrier stigma of being just a carrier and being an unaffected carrier, which obviously we know is not true. You see how that's impacted women across so many excellent diseases across the entire world. Um, so yeah, I would love for you to join and you can definitely contact yeah, me. Um, I always, of course, love talking about these things and I'm really grateful to you know, have met Olivia earlier this year. I'm surprised like we haven't met earlier because my mom knew you're like, we've, we've know all similar people. Like we're yeah. in that web, but we just, uh, formally met earlier this year but, but yeah it's it's been great so far just having someone who really gets it so if you ever want to talk to people who who get what you're going through definitely reach out yeah 100 um and on that note should we finish yeah thank you everyone thank you for listening